My name is Blair Metcalf. I work here. Uh, I've worked here for four years. I actually work in another building, and I'm a UX engineer. I'm here to tell you about what UX engineering means. Um, I'm going to go through a couple stories and then like end on a demo. And hopefully, if uh, everything goes right, the demo will crash, uh, which is normal. So you may be sitting there asking yourself a few questions. Who am I? Um, I'll go, I'll go over that. I'll give you a little bio and, and there's a reason to the bio. I'll give you a timeline of like flip flopping between design and development. <clears throat> I'll tell you why I'm talking at you, why it's important. Um, UX engineers, demos are often the most, um, can you help me out with this monitor over here? Oh, uh... um, demos are often the most powerful things in any meeting. And so the prototyper is actually the most powerful person in the meeting. I'll go over like how you do this, um, and then I'll prove it, and then I will give you something to walk away with. I don't think we're going to get that screen. No? No. Look over here. <laughs> um, OK, so I'll, I'm going to go through my, my portfolio really quickly, because it starts to show um, a split between design and development. To a recruiter, I look like a weirdo. I look like a bad designer and a bad developer. But when you when you smush them, I'm a I'm I'm a unicorn. So I've done everything. I've owned businesses. I've designed. I've developed. And over the course of 15 years, I think I've done everything. And so if you look at this timeline, starting around the turn of the century, I started making McDonald's.com, Cadillac.com, um, for big agencies. And then I used that, put it in my portfolio, and I worked off-site for years. Six years, never met my boss. I worked in Flash. Um, people may hate on this, but it's one of the best things that's ever been made for front end. Yes, it is. Um, <clears throat> I worked for Microsoft. I worked for T-Mobile. I worked for Zune. You can hate on that, too. Um, and I did all of this off-site. I had several code libraries that, that allowed me to go really fast. Um, towards the end of that, I pitched to a friend, hey, we're really good at what we do. Let's stop working for other people. And we started our own business. I did front end. I did the design. He did the back end. <clears throat> and so I'm just going to quickly show that. Um, so that of the work that I've done, I've worked on all of these logos. <clears throat> and there's a product that we made called Pillow Mob. And I think that this is sort of important into to what I do. Um, Pillow Mob is a company that turns your head into a pillow. You send us a photo, we send you your head as a pillow, and you can put it on your couch in two weeks. And so what we did is we prototyped it. We went out and we bought an expensive printer. We tried to print on fabric. <clears throat> and then slowly but surely, we figured out how to print on fabric. Um, I designed it. He built the back end. We made sure that we had a fulfillment uh, ordering system. And then within three months and spending 200 bucks, we ended up on the NBC Today Show. We got you know, 100,000 views in one day. Um, and so this is, this is what it looks like. Um, <laughs> oh, so, so that's my wife, and she's sleeping with another man. Um, there is a commercial. You can look this stuff up. It's called Pillow Mob, Your Couch or Mine. Um, this is Kathy Lee and Hoda drinking wine at 10 a.m. with <laughs> pillows of my dog and my my baby. Um, and the, the whole idea, which, which was sort of funny back then, um, was push and pull. The idea was cute and creepy, and, and lo and behold, years later, that's all that politics is. It's like this kind of 50-50 of push and pull. And that was our marketing campaign. It was a bottom-up thing. Okay, so moving on, there's this split between design and development, and that's, that's what a UXE is. And, and I think often when I go to meetings, I want to walk in with work. I want to have a demo. It anchors everything that I say to that demo. The person with the demo is the most powerful person because often everybody uses words, they say words, they have words in decks, and everybody nods their heads and they agree, but nobody knows what they're agreeing to. A prototype is different. Everybody knows what they're agreeing to. 
So this is a CGI picture of like the, lo the Mars rover landing. And when I see this, what I see is a prototype come to life. And so I imagine when they started to build this, they were like, how can we land an egg by throwing it off of the Fremont Bridge without breaking the egg? And I start to see that you know, these, these kinds of things come to life. And when prototypers make their prototypes, realistically, they're going through these questions and they're like, how can we land this product? <clears throat> so I wanna go into a tool that I started working on here. Hopefully it'll be public in a few months. Um, who here works with designers as a developer? And then who is a designer and they work with developers? And then I guess all the other hands are other people, like are you in the software industry? Can I get a hand for that? <laughs> okay. In general, there's, there's, this, there's this split between design and development. There's a, there's a kind of handoff, and there's always this tension between designers and developers. Designers don't know what they're talking about. De developers are too rigid and stiff. Um, and there's a problem. Designers speak in certain mediums, Developers speak in other mediums. Here we have the material spec and you can see like an app bar, you can see some buttons and different things and they spec those out, they make bitmaps, they make pixels. Um, and then they go and they make a sticker sheet in Sketch and this is a way that you can drag and drop these pixels and you can make comps, mocks quicker. But then the engineers go on to make demos of the components and to a degree each of these roles own the thing that they made and there's really no easy conversation between the two and it's all duplicate effort sometimes they throw things over the wall and they hope for the best and so what we started to think was can we make a tool where designers and developers are working in the same tool and there is this conversation so just imagine what if you had a development environment that you can design in and you get Google Docs comments. You could start to have conversations about the flows that you're laying out. You could say there's a bug in this, in this component, this one you know, needs a variant, et cetera. So we started to prototype this. Um, this is an internal tool, it's called CloudKit. It is, it, there is a blog post about it, so I'm not revealing anything. But what you see here is the project view. Across the top, you can name it. It shows the saved at time. There's a viewport. Uh, you can change the dimensions of the page that you're on. Um, in the top left, you can add a component. And below that is the DOM tree. And you can start to select different elements and then add elements to that scope. And the idea here is it's a drag and drop WYSIWYG for live components that you can lay out flows, prototypes, and prototype quickly. Uh, this should be another slide and it should show bringing in data. And so here we have a table component and then we hook that up to a Google spreadsheet. It has an ID and then you don't configure all of the rows, columns and cells. You configure the spreadsheet and then that sucks in all the data and populates the table. It's a very fast way to, to make flows. And so what we did was we used this prototype and we started to show it around. It got a lot of excitement. It went all the way up the chain and we got funding. And so I just want to give a quick little demo of that here. And if everything goes wrong, there's going to be a ton of errors and nothing will work. Um, but what you get across the side is a series of panels where you can visually find a component. You could search for it. There's different filters for that component and you can drag and drop that in place and see where it reflows. There's no, there's no need to write code. You can drag and drop everything. There's a styles panel where you could, as we're building this right now, you can bind typography throughout the app systemically. There's a place for data where you could, as I showed that spreadsheet, you could populate a, a component with a lot of data. Um, and then you can drag and drop images. And so also at the bottom, you can start to write code and you can see where your drag and drop code ends up. And I took these from the Angular Material uh, site and just pasted these in. This page here is 
um, a custom library. We call it Fortnightly. This is just from Material Design. And you can make your own components, import them, and work with your designers uh, with their code. Up here is a preview button. And then you can preview the prototype that you've made. It clicks through to all the pages. And then you can comment on specific elements. Um, you can go through the different pages. Uh, and then you can see a full view. And then poof, there's your prototype. And you can come back and start designing again. Um, so the idea here is you make a small prototype, you show the vision, and then you go bigger. <clears throat> All right. So in the end, if you don't have any questions, there are nothing, there's nothing to prototype. You would never prototype a table. Everybody knows how a table works, unless you're going to add some kind of new filter. What if you had tabs under a filter above a table? Well, let's see how that could work. Maybe everybody hates it. Or you prototype it. Prototypes answer questions. If you have no conflict on your team, you may not need a prototype. And then clicking is believing. Everybody makes mocks. I'm convinced the more complicated the mocks get, actually people are lost between the clicks. It's just a quick change between the mock and nobody knows what did that when you click right. If you click on it yourself, you know the whole flow. Um, and with that, come find me. I'm pretty friendly. I won't bite your head off. Uh, if you have any questions about UX engineering at Google, we are hiring. Um, it is a public post. Search for Fremont, Seattle, Kirkland, UX engineer. Um, and I just like meeting people. So tell me what your goals are. I want to hear them. Thank you. Cool. <laughs> All right, thank you. Do you do Q, Q and A or? Uh, yeah, actually, let's do a Q and A section now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Great. Are there any questions? Yeah, hit me. Um, I, I knew I didn't catch it because it was on the far side there, but when you're building out the controls there, um, what is it that the, the developer gets? Was that at the very bottom the, the HTML the DOM? Yeah. The, what's What's fascinating. Um, is that we are actually generating real code. It's, there's no proprietary other language. And so we're storing HTML, the Angular template. We're storing CSS. And so in the end, you can actually download the zip and it, with an MPMI, NPM start, it runs within two minutes. But we also export to StackBlitz. And we open in 10 seconds. Um, and so Nicole, one goal that we have is to replace StackBlitz in NG Girls with Co-design. Yes. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. Let's do it. Let's do it. Anything else? Yeah. At what point you described a little bit of a process here for how you're approaching these problems? At what point you start to incorporate design systems? Oh, yeah. Design systems are huge. It's the it's the economics of you know design and engineering. There's a lot of speed to it. Um, I work on Google Cloud, and that is essentially like my whole life. Um, so it's. Design systems are nonstop. Um, we have like a memorization of the components. We have a memorization of the styles. Um, people notice when things are off. So I would say all the time. However, as you get bigger, that design system is actually a friction. And, and so that's where this, this kind of tool comes in. Um, and and I, I would actually say that like Google Cloud is suffering from that. And we're trying to figure out how to go faster. But a design system has pros and cons. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Continue. Just a quick expansion. Yeah. Um, in your flow, I guess you're spending a lot of, it seems like you're spending a front time to expand and define some of the system, modify it. Mm -hmm. Because you're bringing in an existing design system with Arial and um, the VMware one. Um, oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, you saw the clarity. Right, right, right. Um, so how, how do you envision uh, developers and designers interacting with that when you don't exactly have a competition or uh, a codified implementation of what 
Yeah, so with this tool, we see that there's a great partnership between Angular, the framework, and then other Angular libraries, Material, and it, then it's Google Cloud hosted. And so with Material, you get themes. They have several themes. And what you can do with this tool is you can modify some of those settings, and you could export that into your, your, your export, your download, your zip. Um, so you wouldn't have to know it. The point of it would be that it's a UI that would walk you through that. Yeah. Hopefully, we, we make it invisible. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And you, someone had a question? Is it possible to extend it by agent control? Like, do you want to write plugins, or do you want, do you want your own templates? Uh, we write all the templates? So that, yeah, that, that's another aspect to it. I didn't show the dashboard, but um, one of the ideas is you would have teams. And those teams would have, would have patterns under there. And so you would be able to make a project, and it would be a pattern, and then you can publish that. So this is actually a UI building platform. You could make a component, and you can share that. And the idea is, is that it's all reuse for designers to go faster. Over here. We are hiring at this office. Oh, was I? Yes, I was hired here. Um, yeah, and then uh, just a quick background. I think the short of it is I don't belong here. <laughs> and I thoroughly believe that. Um, and I've taught myself over the course of years. Uh, I taught myself Angular in fall. Um, and I started in iOS, and they said do front end. That was really difficult. Um, and I think it takes a mixture of skills to work with hundreds of people. It doesn't necessarily mean that you have to know the, the, the technology the best. It's how do you get ish done? Yeah. Yes? Um, you mentioned before that uh, you can plug in other libraries uh, besides mm -hmm. materials. Would that include like Prime MG or Bootstrap? Bootstrap, yeah. Yeah, all these. Um, so what, what's needed is that we have a CLI that runs through your, your library, your UMD bundle, and then what we are working on is a standardization of your inputs and outputs. And so then we could sit there instead of just saying it's a string, it's a Boolean, we could actually say it's a color. It's more complex. Um, hopefully we'll work with interfaces and so that you could pass in complex structured objects. Um, but we will have a CLI to import your library. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so Felix engineering versus US design is that just like a difference in what you put on your signature, or is there like a substantive difference? Yet, yeah. design tends to be mocks, depending on who you work with. It could be systems. And UX engineers scale design. Significantly different. It's not just um, like a bespoke UI. It's like, how can we make this reusable? Great. How can 10,000 people use this? Significantly different thought process. Yeah. All right. Oh, one more. I'm going to get hate mail for this. <laughs> None of it matters. I'm not kidding. Um, like, I've developed UI in a bajillion languages, and in the end, like, there are rough differences. One of my favorite books is just a JavaScript design pattern book. And in the end, like you take different patterns from different frameworks, but none of it matters. If, if you are learning the language, you'll sit there and you'll figure out what it is that you want to do. Um, you know, Angular tends to be more enterprisey, and React tends to be trendier, hipper, uh, more consumer. What do you want to do? And then go learn that framework. Yeah. Well, I mean, just straightforward. I mean, React is 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 great. Yeah. So in Google, you don't only use Angular, or you just combine your environment. Google is is fragmented, and the products will pick out what is best for them, and so. You may find a Google product that uses React, uh, 
but there's no mandate. Yeah. 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 All right. I've taken enough time. Thank you very much.